All right, folks, I have a couple things I want to talk to you here about the Legend of Zelda franchise, Nintendo's treatment of it here on Nintendo Switch, and obviously some conversations around, like, is Nintendo scamming us with these $60 prices for games like, I don't know, Link's Awakening, or in this case, Skyward Sword HD? Lots of controversy surrounding the price point of $60 for that game. Some understandable controversy in some light, but also we need to have an honest conversation about things like perceived value. Now, before we get into this, I am giving away a $99 Nintendo Switch eShop card down in the description or the pinned comment or both, whichever one you want to click on. Uh, so go enter that and I wish all you guys luck. So first up, uh, let's get into some of the bigger news here, and then we'll get into the larger conversation. And that is, we're getting more Zelda ports this year. Uh, I think we've speculated and long assumed we were going to get more Zelda ports this year, but now we basically know because two major uh, people out there named Andy Robinson and Tom Phillips, both of them professional journalists, uh, Andy Robinson for the VGC, Video Game Chronicle, uh, and then Tom Phillips for Eurogamer. So two relatively well-known big outlets. Uh, these are some journalists that have basically put out there that we are getting the Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD. So here's tweet one from Andy Robinson. It says, for those disappointed with the Skyward Sword remaster, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess are 100% coming this year. So that's at least one good 3D Zelda. That's his personal opinion. Uh, and then Tom Phillips in response to Cheese Meister, who said, well, look at the bright side. If you already have the Wind Waker and Twilight Prince on Wii U, there's no need to rebuy them again. Tom Phillips says, see you in a couple months. Essentially inferring Nintendo's announcing these games. And I think we've ex long expected Twilight Princess HD and the Wind Waker HD to Wii U games, Wii U HD I don't know, remasters? What do we even call them? Uh, to come over. Because we've been getting pretty much all the Wii U games on Switch. Which is fine. I, I There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, we still need to get Star Fox Zero over here. Uh, a few other games as well. But I, I do think that it's very obvious for the Zelda's 35th anniversary. Which Nintendo will mention eventually. Even if they don't on the actual anniversary. Uh, we're going to get those games. Skyward Sword HD I think was the first shoe to drop. And I think what's interesting is... I'm starting to think we're going to get each game individually, potentially for $60, uh, which will be interesting since it's going to be, it, it, it's, it, it's weird. So let's talk about Skyward Sword here. So Skyward Sword HD is coming to Switch. Uh, it, they're charging 60 bucks. You can go pre-order on the eShop right now. Obviously, you can wait and just get it in person at Walmart for 50 bucks if you want. Save $10 there. Uh, but that's true with any game that releases. We can't really consider Walmart pricing some sort of standardized industry-wide price point. That, oh, look, it's really a $50 game. Mm, not really reliant on your in-person -wall, in Walmart. Having stock, also reliant that you even have a Walmart around you that you can purchase it from. Also reliant that you're willing to even go to a Walmart in the middle of a pandemic. So... Lots of things to consider, though. That's why, nope, it's a $59.99 game. Here's my thoughts on this. So, we have to first consider what are they doing with Skyward Sword HD. All right, they're taking a game that was originally in 480p and up it. Now, we don't know for sure if that up is 1080p docked, 720p handheld, but we know it's probably at least 720p since that's the maximum resolution of the actual handheld switch. Okay, so we got 720p, bare minimum, right? We also have a bump from 30 FPS to what we presume is going to be a locked 60 FPS. I don't really see anything that happened in that game. There's not a billion enemies on screen. So I, I'm pretty sure it's going to stay at a locked 60 FPS, which is a big improvement, by the way, that creates smoother, more accurate gameplay. Uh, we also know that the motion controls are back fully. Uh, with Joy-Con, also some Zelda Joy-Con to come out along with it. But the point is that the Joy-Con, supposedly, according to what Eiji Anumu stated, are actually better and more accurate at motion control than the old Wii Remote Plus and Nunchuck setup. So in theory, we have better motion controls in this game because this was like the game that was highlighting the Wii controls. It just came out so late, nobody cared. Uh, and then 
They also remapped it so you could use a Pro Controller, use the Switch Lite, etc. And basically do all the sword movements with the right stick. Because if you remember, the original game didn't have a right stick. It just had the one stick on the Joy. So it was really easy to kind of take the controls and say, hey, look, just use the right stick uh, for it. Uh, they, they showed you flicking it certain ways for slashes, which, by the way, that's how the motion controls work in the game. You flick your wrist, you flick your wrist, or you just flail your arm, flail your arm, whatever, all over the place. But the point is that... Uh, the right stick can basically mimic the 360-degree motion of the sword. So people wonder, like, how are, you, how are you supposed to stick your sword in the air? Push the stick up. How are you supposed to do dousing? Push the stick down. I mean, like, this is very obvious. You would lift your arm up, lift your, put your arm down, do the same thing with the right stick. I don't think anyone concerned with the controls spinning to, like, make the eye get dizzy in one of the puzzles. Like, I don't think you need to worry about it. People have already remapped to the right stick in emulators so like nintendo's just doing what people have already done to make this game playable so uh in in people's preferred way of playing so all right that's basically the gist of what they did now maybe there's some more maybe there's some additional amiibo functionality they might have tossed in there uh it doesn't sound like there's any new content uh potentially like maybe they're doing like a quick sale thing like they did in wind maker hd where they make the loft wing be able to temporarily like fly a little faster up there since the world's a little empty up in the sky uh, just like people complained about that in Wind Waker, that was a complaint in Skyward Sword. So maybe they do something like that. But honestly, uh, even if they don't, I don't really think that's that big of a deal. Uh, I think what's what's interesting is that they did all this and they're charging 60 bucks. Now, we recently talked about this on our Nintendo Direct Smash or Past uh, Nintendo Prime Podcast episode one featuring Super Metal Dave. So if you want a much deeper in-depth conversation with multiple people, uh, other perspectives, head to that podcast and watch it. Seriously, it's an amazing episode. In fact, I'm going to probably start advertising that podcast more often. And I that, that podcast episode is like the quintessential way I've always wanted a video game podcast to be, especially in video form. But here's the thing. Nintendo has created expectations for Wii U ports, Wii ports, etc. Xenoblade Chronicles was a Wii game. Yeah, they took it over to 3DS as well, the new 3DS. But when they brought it to here, they redid the visuals. They redid the visuals and they gave us a bunch of new content. Look at what they did for Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. They added that whole Bowser's Fury aspect. Pitman 3 Deluxe, they added the Alomar levels, uh, you know, even Captain Toad, they added Switch specific Cap, you know, Captain Toad levels. To be fair, they had to get rid of some of the old Wii U levels, but still, we did get technically new content with that game. Uh, if you look at, uh, I'm, I'm trying to even think back, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Hey, look, 60 bucks, same game, but you got all the DLC packed in to one package, so it, it didn't feel like that bad of a deal at the time. Now. You know, in 2021, it's a little weird we're still paying that price, but the game keeps selling, so who can blame Nintendo? The point I'm making here is that Nintendo set up these expectations that with pretty much every game, old game anyways, that they bring to Switch that isn't like, you know, even when you look at the games they didn't do much in, right? uh, Super Mario Galaxy, you know, Super Mario 64, Sunshine. Like, they basically just HD'd the games and threw us at us. They packed those three games into one package. So... With Skyward Sword HD, it certainly looks like they are offering you less value for the same money. But here's the deal. Value is in the eye of the beholder. To me, as a fan of Zelda who 100%ed Skyward Sword, uh, hasn't really touched it since the Wii days, uh, am I interested in Skyward Sword HD? The answer is yes. For 60 bucks, I will spend $60 to get this game in HD and 60 FPS with non-motion control options. Even though I really enjoy the motion controls, I'm going to try it both ways and see which way I end up preferring. Because at the time, there wasn't options. So you you had to basically like the motion controls if you really wanted to, to play the game. Uh, so I that's what I did. Uh, so my thing is, does that mean the game is a $60 game? on the caliber of Super Mario 3D World's Bowser's Fury? Well, let me say something here. For me, yeah. I'm going to spend more time playing Skyward Sword HD than I'm going to spend playing Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. And again, this can make me part of a perceived problem, but I think the problem really is perception. Look, a lot of people complaining that Skyward Sword HD is 60 bucks. How many of you are actually planning to buy the game? Like, how many of you, at no matter at what price, unless it was dirt cheap, 
we're, we're going to buy the game. Like When they announced Skyward Sword HD, before you even knew the price, were you thinking, oh, yeah, I'm going to buy that game? How many of you saw the $60 price point and said that we're going to buy the game and went, oh, you know what, 60 bucks, I'm not going to? Nintendo, I think, fundamentally understands their audience at a level we don't. There's those that complain on the internet about pricing, and then there's those that actually buy games. And for the most part, Nintendo has proven time and time and time again they can release these games at 60 bucks and they are going to sell. I'll give you an example of a game that they brought over that did have very minimal changes and they sold it at max price. They sold it actually at a more expensive price. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. And it sold. It sold well. That's my point. Nintendo knows its audience. Nintendo is going to sell games at a price point that they think the audience can bear. And they have set expectations that every port, every HD thing they do is going to be $60. They have set that expectation and nobody should really expect it to be less. Even if you wanted to, you can make an absolutely fair argument that Skyward Sword HD is offering you less for the same amount of money than a bunch of other games Nintendo has given us. At the same point, hey, people are going to pay it anyways because they want to play Skyward Sword in HD. The perceived value at $60 is there for enough people. And let's think about why is the value there. It, it was on Nintendo Wii. What's the big deal? Well, to give you an idea, it came out towards the end of the Wii life cycle when a lot of people moved on. It didn't sell very well. So it's not even that well-known of a game for a lot of Zelda players. Breath of the Wild has since come out and moved over 20 million units, which is more, there's more Zelda fans now than there's ever been in the history of the franchise. Maybe they're curious on going back and playing an older Zelda game. We saw what Link's Awakening did. Now, Link's Awakening is a nice little argument here against Skyward Sword. Link's Awakening was originally a Game Boy game. And they kind of redid it in color a bit for the Game Boy Color, etc. We've seen it kind of reiterated and re-released over the years, but not really remade until the Switch when they completely did a new engine, new visuals, all that jazz. They did a lot. They overhauled the whole game and boom, sold it for 60 bucks. You could argue it was worth it. Now, look at perceived value though. Is Link's Awakening on Switch as valuable of a game as Breath of the Wild that sells at the same price? I think most of us could factually say Breath of the Wild is a more premium game than The Link's Awakening. So why the hell are they both $60? Because you're going to spend the money anyways. Nintendo has realized that by making the expectation that everything they release is going to be $60, that consumers are conceding that if they want to play this Nintendo game, they're going to spend $60. Value is in the eye of the consumer, and the consumers have been conditioned and expected to pay a certain price to play Nintendo IP, whether it's old or new. And at the end of the day, it's up to us as consumers to decide if we're okay with that. Am I okay that Skyward Sword costs 60 bucks? Clearly, because I'm going to buy it. Does it mean I don't understand people that refuse to buy it on principle of the pricing? <laughs> of course I do. Of course I do. Don't buy it then. I'm not here to make your purchasing decisions to spend your money. Spend your money any way you deem fit. But me personally, I'm going to buy it. Just like I'm probably going to end up buying the Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD all over again on Switch when they inevitably release them individually for 60 bucks. Now, would I love for them to package them together for 60? <laughs> yeah. I would love for them to use, hey, look, Skyward Sword's never been in HD. That's why we're charging 60. These are two Wii U ports. We're going to bundle them together and we're going to charge you 60 and you get a bundle. It's not happening. Does this mean there won't be a Nintendo Switch bundle collection this year? No. They could bundle the Wind... Uh, oh, not the Wind Maker. Uh, Other Nintendo Pass. They could bundle Ocarina of Time. They could bundle Majora's Mask. There's your three-pack of Super Mario All-Stars. Or Zelda All-Stars in this case. They could bundle a lot. But reality is Nintendo knows what they're doing. So be upset about the pricing if you want. Be upset about the precedent the pricing is setting. But this precedent has been set with Nintendo... Dating back to what the Wii days, the, the 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 GameCube days, like how far back do we want to go where Nintendo brings old games to a new platform and charges you full price? Nintendo's been doing this for almost the entire existence of them as a video game company. So at, at some point, I guess it just gets tiring. I have been critical 
of this in the past. I was critical of it in this video and critical of it on the podcast. But obviously it's still worth it to me. Why is it worth it to me? Because I just love Zelda that much. They could probably tell me it's 100 bucks, and I'd probably still buy it. Is there a price they could charge that I would avoid it? Absolutely. They start telling me it's $150, $200. That's the only way you're getting it. I'm not spending that kind of money just to play Skyward Sword in HD. Especially when you could just freely emulate it in 4K at that. But still, uh, I'm going to get it. I want them to keep bringing back old Zelda games. Keep HD in them or remaking them like Link's Awakening. I want to keep seeing Nintendo provide lots of Zelda goodness. And I have a feeling we're going to get so much Zelda goodness this year. I'm going to end up spending three, four, five hundred dollars on Zelda related stuff this year. Just because I'm a sucker for Zelda. I don't know if you guys could see it. I have a lot of Zelda stuff. I'm a big Zelda fan. I ran Zelda fan sites for like nearly 20 years. So... I am unique, I guess, in that Zelda is my thing, and Nintendo has me hook, line, and sinker when it comes to Zelda. They have the teeth in deep with me. You want to talk about the one thing I'm probably a fanboy about? It's Zelda. Not Nintendo on the whole. Zelda. I, I, I can't help it. It's just it, it, it's exactly what I love to play in video games. I will play Zelda games probably until the day I die, or the day my hands stop working, or other controllers that you could use when you're disabled don't work for me. Anyways, that's what I got for you guys. Uh, you guys let me know your thoughts on the Skyward Sword pricing, your thoughts on the fact that it appears that the Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD are, are all but confirmed by two prominent media members as coming, just, you know, Nintendo saving it. So they, they've already heard, they've already prepped news articles and previews. And heck, they might even have review copies of the game right now to drop previews. Because sometimes what will happen is Nintendo will... Uh, do like, oh, hey, we're announcing this today, and then media does previews like the next day because they've actually had their hands on it for a while, and it's easy for media to keep their mouth shut about it because we're just talking about games that have already been out, right? So, like, the previews shouldn't be anything that, like, shocks you. The focus is always going to be on performance, resolution, how does the controls feel, all that jazz, and if they do anything new with it, which I don't think they will. Anyways, folks, I'm Nathaniel RoboJets from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'll catch you in the next video.